No, but I think uh, the Minister of Defence actually made a decision uh, not to proceed with it. Uh, it will be uh, a loss to the government and also to the nation. Uh, in our fight against terrorism and extremism, we cannot do it alone. So if they do not they want to sever ties, ties with Saudi Arabia, what are their plans uh, in the future uh, to strengthen uh, our um, joint effort to combat terrorism and extremism? Um, we are lucky that they are cancelling it early because the centre is still at the very early stages and it hasn't been launched yet. But that is the decision of the government and the Minister of Defence. Um, it is their prerogative to do that, but uh, it is also important for them to actually um, table um, to the public uh, what are their alternative plans, if not with Saudi Arabia, with whom? Uh, because dalam kita nak berdepan dengan keganasan dan juga ekstremisme um, dengan isu-isu um, sebegini, kita tidak boleh bertindak secara uh, persendirian. Dan kalau sekiranya mereka nak batalkan hubungan dengan Saudi Arabia apa perancangan mereka selepas ini itu mesti ditahu uh, dikenali um, awal considering that you know do you believe that uh, with the abolition of the king salman center Malaysia will be therefore more more vulnerable to the risk of terrorism and if so primarily for the part of the world the king salman center um, was a realization um, between uh, Malaysia and uh, Saudi Arabia that we cannot uh, combat terrorism and extremism only through military means. It is a soft uh, uh, approach uh, where we wanted to um, go head on with ISIS, for example, on their ideology. Um, and, and that required um, a new approach. So that was something that we were looking at, me and uh, um, the Crown Prince. Um, but that uh, is a decision for the present government to decide whether that is the right approach or, or not. And obviously they, they felt that the centre was not um, relevant um, and that they have to find an alternative because we feel that the principle, I feel, that the principle of engaging um, the uh, scholars, the academics, uh, the intellectuals, the, um, the Muslim ummah uh, through the soft approach is the right way because the, the military approach, as you see um, in, uh, in, um, in Syria, in Yemen, in Libya, has not worked. In Crown Prince as in Mohammed bin Salman, mm -hmm. that Crown Prince. Yes, it's Saudi, right? Yeah? Saudi, yeah. Saudi. And also, sir, um, do you think that, you know, once the centre has been abolished, it's so by contohnya, kan? Do you think if they can be sort of like, uh, in order to, to, as you say, lah, to use the soft approach, right? the present government may use various alternatives such as contohnya lah, uh, arrange to, to, to gather, say, the uh, Jema'ah Ulama or Ulama Council in Southeast Asia? It's yet, it, that is a good approach, but it's yet to be seen. There's one thing uh, suggesting it and, uh, and one thing to operationalize it. So let's hear, because I was made a conscious effort uh, in the last uh, 100 days that saya nak tengok dan lihat saya tak mau buat banyak sangat komen supaya Menteri Pertahanan yang baru diberikan ruang untuk um, belajar dan uh, melihat sendiri apa yang ada di Mendef dan apa juga pendirian yang dia boleh lakukan selepas ini tetapi the honeymoon period is over so now I'm going to uh, make my views heard and we are starting uh, with the policy of um, uh, Saudi Arabia and their position on the King Salman Center of International Peace. But there are a lot more issues with regards to assets, with regards to the welfare of our, our, our soldiers and their families and veterans. All that, uh, I feel that after the 100 days, uh, it's about time that they actually um, proceed to actually govern and administer and MENDEF is so important because it involves the security and the defense of our country.